Hello, this is Sherman Blackwell, and welcome to today's program presented by Singing River Mental Health. Thank you for joining me today. I have a very special guest on the program today, Dr. Mark Yeager, uh, who is the executive director of the Yeager Group. And Dr. Yeager, good to have you with us today. Good to be here. And uh, uh, you've been on the program a little over a year ago, maybe a little, That's little, right. little over a year ago. At that time, you were uh, with you were the director of the Division of Autism for the Department of Mental Health, and um, since then you you retired. That's right. From the department, and tell us what you retired from something to yeah, something. Yeah, I retired to uh, an organization that I've been involved with since its inception. It's called Team, which uh, Team is an acronym for Together Enhancing Autism Awareness in Mississippi. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that's composed of parents and professionals that are interested in furthering the cause and programs for persons who are on the autism spectrum. And uh, we, up until that time, had always just had volunteers that ran the organization, but now we uh, uh, have a couple of, of uh, contractual employees and myself that uh, work full, you know, work on full time. Full time. Yeah. 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 Uh, Earlier today, we we talked a little bit, Dr. Yeager, about uh, autism and uh, autism spectrum, and uh, I, I said I saw a sign, a billboard, and uh, made me think of you, and it said about one in 150 births that occur will uh, the child will have some type of autism spectrum. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, from time to time we hear different things as we come up in our society about new things or, or illnesses that take place. And so uh, give us, if you will, a, a cursory kind of definition of what autism spectrum means for, for the individuals that are out there and what kind of symptoms, what do you look for? And, sure. And, and your history, because I know you're, you're pretty well, you're, you're versed in this uh, and you travel a good bit and, uh, and is actually an authority on autism. Yeah, you know, first of all, the billboard you saw is part of the national campaign that uh, designates April as Autism Awareness Month in, in the country. Uh, the governor in Mississippi designated April 18th specifically as Autism Awareness Day in the state of Mississippi as well as the entire month. Uh, so that's part of that campaign, and the, and, the, and the statistics that you're talking about were actually ar arrived uh, through research by the Center for Disease Control, and it says that one out of every 150 children will uh, have a diagnosis of autism. That number actually looks like it's going to change in the next round of studies to about one in every 94 boys. It is more prevalent in boys, about four to one more prevalent boys than girls. Uh, the, the symptoms are, are very different based on one child to the next, but yet at the same time, the way they appear are different, but at the same time there's a common thread in what those behaviors are described. At a very young age, a child may not uh, be connecting with their parents. You know, even a very small infant begins to use their eyes to find their parents, where they're standing, to be uh, aware of their relationship to where they are. They'll even laugh and coo and react to each other, point their, you know, point at things begin to develop words at a very young stage. And if these things aren't there, not saying that that's autism, right. but there's something of some concern that needs to be at least examined to make sure why that child is not meeting those developmental milestones. And so those are some of the things that we begin to look at as we hone in on those behaviors uh, to decide whether or not they're, the child is showing behaviors that are really indicative of a diagnosis of autism or maybe some other kind of a, of a developmental disability. Autism is a very complex neurologically based developmental disability. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, uh, it is behaviorally diagnosed at this point. We have no medical test or anything. Okay. So it does, we do rely on the behavioral assessment. Okay. And you have, uh, tell, tell uh, as a little story goes along with what you told me, earlier today when you first decided to get into uh, that your discipline was going to be autism people told you well, why? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know at that time 20 years ago we knew very little about autism we knew the word we had some uh, some criteria that don't even resemble what we go by today and so people would say why you know there's maybe seven yeah, yeah where yeah. how are you going to find people to work with 
Uh, I, I look awfully intuitive now 20 years later because there's so many <laughs> cases of it. But at the same time, I think there's, it's an evolving field that is beginning to re-examine not only the criteria that we use to determine a person's uh, characteristics of whether or not they have an autism spectrum disorder, but to re-examine other type of categorical diagnosis. And, uh, uh, and so what we're seeing is that kids that may have 15 years ago being diagnosed as having a behavior disorder, an emotional dis disturbance, um, something, something along those lines, uh, even, even schizoid affective, those kinds of diagnosis, now what we know is they're better described as having an autism spectrum disorder and don't really fit the, the DSM. You know, you and I have been around this field for a long time, and we've always had those young people, and even adults, that we would sit around with our colleagues and say, you know, here's a case that doesn't really quite fit what we know about a certain category. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're beginning to know now is those people that didn't quite fit those categories. Think of the adult that might have been diagnosed as having some, uh, you know, bipolar or schizophrenia right. that just didn't. Now what we're knowing is that those, those cases quite often was someone who had a form of autism that was being misdiagnosed, but still puzzling to the clinician. Yeah. I, I know that uh, I, I, we've had a conversation that you don't necessarily, I mean, it's probably, if I've heard you right, you think that it has both a, a behavioral and a genetic component to right. it uh, in its, in its uh, origin or how that comes about. How is a, a and I know they, they're variable and it's kind of nebulous, but how, how is a 13-year-old child that has been diagnosed with autism spectrum of some stripe, how are they treated? Well, there's a lot of stigma that comes along with a, a child who has autism for a couple of reasons, mainly because unlike other types of disabilities that have physical type of characteristics that a person can observe, say a child who has Down syndrome, for instance, there's a physical appearance that we know that that's, that that's the set of circumstances. A child with autism looks like every other child uh, out there that is expected to behave in a certain way. When those, their behavior is quite different from what we expect, even though they look like every other child out there, then there's a, there's a huge stigma that comes along with that. Not only is the child misbehaving, supposedly, by observation, but the parents are, are poor parents because they're not keeping check on them as well, too. Neither of those are true. The truth is, is that the behaviors that, that a person may observe are quite often, or most often, driven by their environment. It may be a sound that you and I really can't hear because they're so sensitive to sound. Lights, sounds, smells, touch, a variety of different things that motivate certain behaviors that it's difficult for us as an observer to say this behavior is connected to that particular thing. Okay, you mentioned that there are some people of notoriety that probably have some stripe of autism. Yeah, there's been a, a lot of discussion over the years uh, you know, some people have even gone back and done posthumous uh, psychological uh, type of profiles on people like uh, Einstein, Thomas Jefferson, Marie Curie, Beethoven, a variety of different people in our past that, uh, without a doubt, achieved some amazing, yeah. amazing things. I mean, where would we be without Thomas Jefferson? Where right. would America be? Right. Um, you know, where would we be without Madame Curie who invented x-rays? I mean, so so we, we see all of these amazing uh, um, uh, you know, these amazing findings. There's, there's people in the public eye that are often discussed and even in, sometimes even say that they may have, be on the spectrum um, without getting into their clinical profile. I won't mention their names, but, right. the, but the point is is that people sometimes don't think they're affected or they don't know someone with autism. Chances are they're watching them on the TV, listening to them in public, and they don't, they're not aware of the fact that that's a form of autism. So it's not a completely, we're not talking about a disabling kind of of process. I mean, people go on who have autism or some stripe, a variation of that, go on to be tremendous leaders, successful people, and uh, so it's not as if in some other type, and I know it's two different fields mm -hmm. when you're talking about, like you say, a, uh, someone with bipolar or a individual that has schizophrenia of some type that is going to be uh, curtailed by that. They may go on. And, I guess what I'm saying is that you, uh, uh, like you said, a lot of people didn't recognize it for what it was, and now we, are we having, uh, because we have more knowledge about it, 
that we recognize it sooner or are more people ending up, like the data says, with some type of autism spectrum? Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's one of those uh, hot debated issues around the autism table. Where are all these kids coming from? Are there more of them? Are we just identifying more of them? Or are we embracing other groups? Uh, is there something that's causing an increase? Uh, the truth is, is a little bit of all that. You know, it, 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 some people can go right on and have a very successful uh, life and, you know, includes being married and having kids and just like everybody else. Um, but at the same time, some kids are, are, or some individuals are significantly affected so that they either uh, don't engage in those kinds of things or because they're very withdrawn. You know, one of the things that we have to look at, though, is that these numbers are truly increasing. And the research is helping us identify it, but the research is only part of it because so many of these kids are, 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 are already on the spectrum, and we've got to figure out how we're going to design programs for right. those individuals. Right, and we're going to talk a little bit in the second half of the program today with Dr. Yeager about some things that are that are happening uh, here in in the Great Magnolia State that he's heading up and that he's doing uh, along those lines. And my guest today is Dr. Mark Yeager who is the Executive Director of the Yeager Group and we're going to talk more with Dr. Yeager as I mentioned in a minute. Let me make a couple of program notes and uh, some, some community notes also. First, let me remind you of the number that you see on the screen there. The primary reason that we bring this program and use any media outlet is to let individuals know in our community of the availability of services through Singing River Mental Health. And of course the number that you see there on your screen is our primary number. It's our uh, mainline number, of course, Monday through Friday, we open 8 to 5, and of course that number is available to you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have a tremendous uh, staff, trained staff that are very altruistic and caring about individuals and uh, many of you know that and I've heard so many comments about the program and we appreciate you and I'd like to take this opportunity to also say what a great staff uh, that I have the privilege of working with uh, some hundred and sixty-five folks now uh, that are at Singing River and I just appreciate them I know some of them tune in and watch but we appreciate the work that they do. Uh, going to have uh, our symposium is coming up. Dr. Yeager is going to be there. Going to be there. We're going to. Uh, uh, that's going to be May 14th at the Gaucher Convention Center. They're from 10 to 2, and we're going to showcase our 33 different programs and be looking uh, at for an opportunity to talk to individuals one-on-one. -on -one. It's a good opportunity for you to get to talk to somebody, a mental health professional. And when we come back, we're going to visit again with Dr. Yeager, and we'll probably talk more about the symposium that's coming up. So we'll see you right after these messages. Hello, this is Sherman Blackwell, and welcome back to today's program presented by Singing River Mental Health. Thank you for joining us today. My special guest is Dr. Mark Yeager. Dr. Yeager is the executive director of the Yeager Group and has a couple of decades now at least uh, working in the field of, of autism and has been at the Department of Mental Health for uh, some 25 years, retired this January, uh, July past June. year. Past June. June. Past June. 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 Yeah. Okay. All righty. And, uh, so his wife told him he had to get another job, and so he <laughs> did. And we're, this is not Dr. Yeager's first time on the program, but um, and as we were closing out the first segment, I was talking about the symposium. I do want to take time to follow up on that, and we'll tell you that uh, Dr. Yeager will be one of our keynote, uh, or will be one of the individuals that will address the crowds, and so uh, we're looking forward to that quickly that's at the Gaucher Convention Center that's May 14th and as you mentioned Autism Month was January of course Mental Health Awareness Month is in the month of May and centered right in there the 14th we're going to have our symposium <coughs> we're going to accentuate our our programs and we're going to have uh, a light lunch will be served from 10 uh, the program's from 10 to 2, speakers will start at 11, we'll have a light lunch, and we've got 
I think uh, that my staff telling me we already have like 20 different vendors that are coming in there mm -hmm. with that too. So that's pretty good. I remember when we were working the MHMR council when you got 30. That was a big. That was a big that deal. That was yeah. a big deal back yeah. then. But um, uh, Dr. Yeager, uh, we've been talking about uh, autism, and I know that this is something that is very important to you. Uh, I want you to know that we can get you some information. We're going to uh, let uh, Dr. Yeager continue to talk about uh, TEAM uh, and what what that's about and tell us about your, I know you've got some exciting activities coming up with your camp kaleidoscope and, and things like that. Just right. give us an update. What well, you do. Team, uh, TEAM does several things, of course, provide good information to families that need information about autism our professionals and we have a toll-free number that families can call in or through our website and they can access information or access us by that way you know the the thing that we want to do is we want to provide information to families so they can make good informed decisions about what kind of treatment their their individual that's in their family might need that's important team doesn't really prefer uh, or show a preference over a certain treatment approach we just try to provide the information so that people are making good decisions about yeah. it um, we also uh, have chapters. We have three chapters here on the coast. We have one in the Ocean Springs area this, over, over on this end of the coast, and we've got one in Long Beach, and then we also have one over in the South Pearl River County area as well. So have three chapters that are on the, that's in the Gulf Coast type of area. And so we, we're getting well organized down here so that we can help provide support to those families. What those chapters do is not only do they serve as a support group, but they also plan and carry out um, act, uh, different types of uh, activities. As a matter of fact, uh, not this Saturday, well no, no, it is this Saturday. This Saturday the Ocean Springs chapter is having a family picnic so they can call the team office and find out okay. uh, information about that family picnic. Um, the Will next, you be here? I, I, I won't be here this, this weekend. Week. I've got another yeah. engagement that I've got to go to. Okay. And like the next weekend, the Picayune uh, group is having a, a, a car wash to raise money for our camp program. That's the third thing that we do, is our adventure-based, recreational type of activities that TEAM is committed to. You know, there's a lot of research being done on autism, um, but the, like I mentioned before the break, there's a lot of families that already have a diagnosis, and they're wondering, what is it that my child can do? What is it that he can become or she can become involved in? We created Camp Kaleidoscope back in 2000, and our first summer we had 14 kids. Okay, now here we are, verging on 2009 summer, we'll have 130 kids that are already registered and have about another 50 that we won't have space for. So wow. we stay, it's, it's an amazingly uh, successful and, a, and an amazingly uh, sought after program. We just got to figure out how to make it available to more people, but we that's in the last week of June. Now what we do need are volunteers, people okay. that want to volunteer to be a counselor, mm -hmm. to come out and work with us. We'll train you, teach you what you need to know about how to be a successful counselor, and then we'll have a week full of fun. Yeah. Uh, and we do everything that kids do at camp. Ho ride horses, swim, arts and crafts, fishing, music, fireworks, dances. We do everything. What makes us different is the fact that my staff and our counselors know how to deal with the circumstances that surround a child with autism spectrum disorders. This is for ages 7 to 17. We also have typical kids there that's peer campers, hang out with, make friends, have fun, and uh, we just have a big time. I don't know how else to say it. We just yeah. have a blast. Yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like, Mark, that you're you, uh, filling a gap, probably this an ever-increasing gap, but I mean, from 14 in the year 2000, and now the you know this kind of number is actually close to 200. You just can't accommodate them. That's right. That is, uh, oh, what? Where were these people getting these kind of activities before? They weren't. That's that's part of the problem. You know, they're, they're, their children would try to go to church camp or try to go to scout camp, and by no fault of those organizations, they really just didn't know how to design programs and manage for this particular um, disability. And that's what that. So we are filling that void because we we know how to do that, but we're training other people how to do it too. And so what we begin to see is other people having interest in uh, us helping them to put programs with their local church or with their local community. Not only are the kids having a good time, last summer we had counselors that came from six countries. 
We had a, a young lady that came all the way from South Africa and another that came from Namibia, Africa, that, to come be a counselor at Camp Kaleidoscope. Wow. So we have kind of an international wow. flavor of our, for our counselors. Uh, but I think that the thing that that says is that the, 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 the value of being able to work with that many kids on the spectrum at the same place and have access to, to people who know a great deal about it is, is kind of invaluable. It's hard to find anywhere oh, yeah. else. Yeah. I would think it would, for, for parents or family members that would be certainly a, an anxiety reducing component sure. you know, if I've got this child. Well, and, well you know, ch talking about the parents, the parents get days off. Many times they, these children that come to our camp have never spent the night away from their parents since the day they were born. And so it's not, all, it's not un unlikely for us to get a kid at 13 and his parents will say he's never spent the night away from home, will he be okay? Well, if they can't leave their kids with me that have autism, there's, there, there's not anybody else they can leave them with. And we have a big time. The parents get three days off, they, and then the next year they come around, there's no anxiety about bringing them back right. and leaving them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, for parents just in general, when kids go to camp, uh, as a rule, uh, you know, the people with special needs like that, I would think that's uh, uh, even more of a, like I said, an anxiety reducer. You have a, you have a, a packet here, a brochure uh, that is just that this, or more than that, more than a brochure, uh, a portfolio here that is full of information concerning uh, what you're doing. I mean, you talk about your camp and these kinds of things, and it has here how to donate, mm -hmm. and and. This is something that I think people would be very interested in, and of course the number you see on the screen there, we'll be glad to get these from Dr. Yeager mm -hmm. and forward them and or. Or they can call us at the team office and we'll be glad to send one right out as well too. Call at the team office. Go ahead and give that number and, and, and that uh, website if you would. The, the uh, website is www.team, it's T-E-A-A-M. Dot org, and then the toll-free number. I think you it's on that on card. card. I can card never. It's eight, yeah, the eight six six number. At one eight six six nine nine three two four three seven. That's toll-free in Mississippi, uh, and you can also contact us through email by our website. Okay. And and I'm I'm glad that you pointed that donate out because one of the things that's important is that we we run our programs through charitable contributions by individuals and businesses sponsorships by organizations that will sponsor us as well and then also we um, are able to uh, secure some small grants that uh, allows us to do some work as well too. Our Camp Kaleidoscope we do have a supporting grant from the Mississippi Department of Mental Health that helps us uh, defray some of the costs. These families are really tapped out when it comes to you know spending money for a summer camp is tough to do when you've got all these other treatments that they're having to pay for. So we try to raise enough money to uh, help those families out so it's not such an expense to them. Absolutely. Well, we certainly want to um, um, be involved in that and certainly encourage uh, uh, individuals that are watching uh, to do so. We had a conversation at lunch about uh, Singing River getting involved in another program. That's right. That program is called ARRAY. ARRAY is, a, is an acronym for Adventures in Recreation for All Youth. Uh, it's, it, it, we do design it around kids who have autism, but it includes any other child with any other kind of disability. And what these are, these are, are specially designed weekend retreat programs where we take kids to do all types of things. Uh, the one that we're looking at in this area happens to be a, like a marine research uh, weekend where we'll go beach combing, uh, collect some samples, take them back to the marine lab and learn about them and have the kids have an educational but a fun experience as well too. Uh, we've got a variety of different uh, other programs we have ideas about, including spend the night on the USS Alabama over in Mobile. Uh, just a variety of different things. Our imagination is really our only limit. That and being able to find sponsors to help us to con conduct the program. So uh, we're really excited about coming to the coast and bringing several of those programs to this area. A lot of kids on the coastal area that, that, that need this kind of support. A lot of families that need this kind of support. So we're real pleased that through our chapters and through working in partnership with you and your organization will help uh, make that possible. We are looking forward to doing that, being a part of that. We certainly want to do that. And, and I know that you do this around the state. I know that you, you speak, too. I know you, you, you really travel uh, beyond the borders of Mississippi, and I know you've done some work in Washington, D.C., and been, mm -hmm. been involved in that 
also. Uh, that's uh, we certainly want to encourage you. We've got a couple of minutes left on on the program today to to get in touch with us, and we'll be glad to get this information to you. Uh, Dr. Yeager is a uh, uh, noted expert in this field, and uh, we're fortunate to have his expertise so close by, and we're looking forward to, to, to doing more, more and more interaction with him along these lines. So uh, give us a call, or as uh, Dr. Yeager mentioned, you can, you can call the number that he gave you. We've got the toll-free number. We've got the, the website number and we'll be glad to get that information to you, and he'll be glad to talk to you. Dr. Yeager's going to be with us in a couple of more weeks. I mean, you're going to be real popular down here on the coast. I love coming down here. Love coming down. And uh, uh, he's going to be one of our speakers at our symposium. That is May 14th, and that'll be here. It's hard to believe this Friday will be May 1st. That's right. I mean, I was just... Uh, eating Thanksgiving dinner, it seemed like, but uh, it's, uh, so that's that's happening. May is Mental Health Month. The first week in May, we have Mental Health Children's Awareness uh, Month and week, and we're gonna be in, our staff is involved with schools and with some uh, local municipalities about some things and information that we're getting out along those lines. Thanks for joining me today. Dr. Yeager, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We're gonna look forward to come back after the camp and maybe before we do something in September or on we'll the other it. on the other project. Okay. Awesome. Good deal. This is Sherman Blackwell. Thank you again for tuning in today. We're going to look forward to seeing you again next week.